Today, I'm going to be sharing with you a problem that I give to my students who are looking to score basically 100 out of 100 in the MAT and also aim for a grade 9 in the TMUA. So if that's you, well done for on this video. My name is Jamie and I studied maths at the University of Oxford and now I'm a full-time maths tutor helping students with an 80% success rate. Uh, oh, sorry, helping students who want to get into Oxbridge with an 80% success rate. Let's have a look at this problem. We've got We've got to find the minimum value for the real valued function f, which uh, takes in inputs, two inputs, x1 and x2, where x1 is between minus 1 and 1, x2 is at least 0, and it spits out some real number, and it's given by this function here. f of x1, x2 is x1 minus x2 squared plus the square root of 1 minus x1 squared minus 18 plus square root x2 all squared. Bit of a mouthful. Do give this problem a go, really, really nice one, and a really, really good way to see if you're good at school maths or just good, uh, sorry, good at actual maths or just good at school maths. Let's have a look. Cool, so you've had a go at this problem. Maybe you tried by expanding all this, which seems pretty natural if you've done school maths, but actually it kind of gets you somewhere, or well, nowhere really, gets you something that's quite ugly. Then perhaps maybe what you did is you saw the word minimum, so maybe you thought to differentiate this and somehow, and set it equal to zero or something. Again, kind of gets you to a dead end. How do we deal with this? Well, we're going to do something which you need to get used to if you're going to do the MAT and TMUA is, well, sitting and staring at a problem, not knowing what to do. So at A-level maths, you're probably good at looking at a problem and knowing instantly what to do. This is a great example of a problem where you might have to sit and stare for a second. What do I notice? Well, I notice that I've got the sum of two squares. It'd be nice if it was the difference, and maybe I could use the difference of two squares, um, but it isn't as a sum. But that reminds me of Pythagoras. Cool. I also notice that this bracket is far nicer than this bracket is. This one looks ugly, really horrible. So I'm going to draw my attention to the nicer looking one. x1 minus x2 squared. Where have I seen that before? Well, we've seen that in the distance formula. So if I had the distance squared between the points x1, y1, and the point x2, y2, and I consider that distance, that's simply equal to the square root of x1 minus x2 squared, uh, sorry, without the square root, because we've squared the distance, x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. And this looks awfully similar to what we have here. Amazing. So in fact, what we can do is we can think of this function f, in fact, using distances. It's simply the distance between the points x1, y1, where y1 is here, root 1 minus x1 squared, and the point x2, and where the y2 value is 18 minus root x2, like so. So just to be clear, f is equal to the distance squared between these two points. This is all good and well, but how is thinking distance going to help us? Well, our goal here is to minimize f. So our goal is to minimize the distance squared between these two points. And to minimize the distance squared, that just corresponds to minimizing the distance between them. Now I'm going to draw a picture. That's something I like doing a lot with these sorts of problems, is drawing pictures. So I'm going to draw a graph for this. This is x1, and then the y value is root 1 minus x1 squared. If you're getting to question 20, and th that's the first time you're struggling in the TMUA, you're probably quite good at maths. You're probably quite good at recognizing that this is just the equation of a semicircle. Let's so do this in a different color. So this is going to be a semicircle, center the origin, radius 1. So this is y equals root 1 minus x squared, like so. Now I'm going to change color and think about this guy, which is y equals 18 minus root x. What does this look like? Well, if I just draw this on the side, root x looks something like that. So therefore, minus root x oops, will look something like this. It's horrible. There we go. A little bit better. And so 18 minus root x is going to look something like that. Just translate it up by 18 units. Obviously, the y-intercept here is 1. So 18 is going to be, well, way off the screen somewhere up here. But actually, we don't really need the whole graph. So I'm just going to kind of assume it's down here. Uh, but this, this part would actually be very far up, but it's not really to scale. Um, so this is the graph y equals 18 minus root x, really not drawn to scale. But the crucial part is it's going to be entirely above this red graph. Okay, and what are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to pick a point on the blue graph and a point on the red graph such that the distance between those two points is minimized. So in other words, find the shortest distance between these two curves. And that looks roughly speaking like this length here. I'll do it in green. So that length there. So I'm just going to call this point here on this curve P and this point here, q, like so. So our goal is to work out this length, p, q. Now, 
What do I know about this, this line PQ? Well, the line PQ is perpendicular to both the curves. And that's kind of because it's the shortest distance. Because shortest distance normally means, well, in fact, definitely means right angles. Um, so in order for something to, you know, if you think about a straight line and a point, what's the closest point, uh, well, sorry, what's the closest point on this line to this point A? Well, it's going to be this point B such that AB is a right angle. It's the same kind of idea here. Now, what do I know about PQ? Well, one thing I do know about for sure about PQ is if I extend this line, it goes through the origin, which it hasn't really done here. So let me maybe change my Q so it's here. So maybe I'll pick P here and Q here, just so my, it agrees a bit with my diagram. Uh, how do I know that the line PQ should pass through the origin? Well, because if you think about circles, when you draw a tangent to a circle, uh, a very basic circle theorem is that the radius is a right angle there. Uh, and so therefore, we know that the normal, which is, of course, a right angle to the tangent, must, when we extend it, pass through the center of our circle, which in this case is the origin. OK, that's amazing. And now we want to know the kind of the gradient of this, this, this green line. Well, we can use the fact that it's also perpendicular to this curve, the blue curve. So let's do some calculus on the side here. So we know that the blue curve has equation y equals 18 minus root x. And so dy dx, it's not too difficult to work out that this is just negative a half x to the minus half. So that there represents the gradient of the blue curve. Now, if I give p the x coordinate alpha, uh, I can deduce that the gradient of pq, which remember, the line pq is perpendicular to the curve, um, y equals 18 minus root x. So mpq is going to have um, a gradient, or the gradient of pq is going to be 2 times alpha to the half. Wonderful. Lovely. How can we use this to help us well, we know that this line PQ, as we said, would, if we extend it, go through the origin. So I know that the line PQ has equation Y equals MX, where M is the gradient, but we've just worked out that this is 2 alpha, or 2 square root alpha, sorry. Lovely. This is all good and well, but we don't know what alpha is yet. We can work out what alpha is, because we know the coordinates of Q, uh, sorry, P in terms of alpha. The X coordinate's alpha, and the Y coordinate is 18 minus root alpha. So substituting that into this equation here, we get 18 minus root alpha equals 2 root alpha times alpha. And so if I bring everything onto one side, I get 2 alpha to the 3 over 2 uh, plus alpha to the half minus 18 equals 0. And it's not too difficult to see that this is simply a hidden cubic. So if I let u equal alpha to the half, I get 2u to the 3 plus u minus 18 is 0. We stare at this for a second. And we see, oh, amazing, u equals 2 is a solution to this, because 2 times 8 is 16, plus 2 is 18, minus 18 is 0. So I can factor out u minus 2, and then you're going to get 2u squared, a plus 9 at the end, and then a plus 4 there, like so. And very nicely, this has no further solutions, at least not in the reals. And that's what we're interested in. So we can conclude for sure that u equals 2, and so alpha must be 4. Amazing. So we get alpha equals 4, which is lovely because now this length here is 4. If I just zoom in on this triangle, we have this length here is 4. Oh, 4. Um, Q is somewhere here. P is somewhere here. Remember, our goal is to work out the length PQ. What do we know about this length? Well, this length here is 1. It's just the radius of our circle. What do we know about this length? Well, if we come back up to P, its Y value is 18 minus root alpha. And we know that alpha is 4, so that's just going to ha have height 16. And so we're just interested in PQ. Well, we can use Pythagoras' theorem to help us. The length PQ is simply going to be the square root 16 squared plus 4 squared minus 1, like so. So the square root of 16 squared plus 4 squared is going to be the hypotenuse. And of course, then we're subtracting 1. What is this equal to? Well, I can take out a factor of 4, and then I'm left with 4 squared plus 1 minus 1. And so this is going to be 4 root 17 minus one, like so. So that is the length PQ, the shortest distance between those two curves. And so therefore F, or the minimum value of F, which I'll maybe call F min, which is equal to D squared, is just four root 17 minus one squared. And if you wanted to, you could expand and simplify that. And that would give you the minimum value of this bizarre function that we had to begin with. A really nice problem where the one of the big morals of the story, morals of solving this problem is going, right, 
let's not do what A level teaches us to do and just go crazy and expand and expand and whatever. It's to go, okay, cool, there's something going on here. What is this trick that's going on? And I really like this problem. Uh, hopefully you did too. Uh, I have a, a bunch of problems where I solve, a bunch of videos where I solve TMUA and MAT past paper actual problems, but also a bunch that I've created myself. I have a whole bank of problems that I use with my students. So if you're looking to do the MAT or the TMUA yourself, or just preparing in general for an Oxbridge admi uh, admissions, uh, and, uh, you know, an application, sorry, uh, and you're looking for some additional support, I'm working with students who are good at school maths, but struggling to bridge the gap um, into getting good at these uh, admissions tests and the whole admissions process, uh, get into I help students in, transform in as little as 12 weeks and 80% of the students I work with end up receiving Oxbridge offers. Link in the description below. You can book a free call with me where we can kind of discuss how we can help you get to that Oxbridge offer in just a few months time. Thanks so much for watching. I'll leave a video on screen where I solve another fun math problem. Go check that out. I'll see you over there.